this if an... Alex Harp had 100 million Twitter followers, you don't think Palantir would be a bigger business? No. No. That, you really just said that right now. Yeah, no. Because there are 100 million Twitter followers, Palantir wouldn't get more access to CFOs and CTOs and C-suite execs that are at the highest level. You don't think he gets that right now? Dude, it, you're, look at your customer who you're trying to sell to. You're not trying to sell, sell software to teeny boppers. You know? Yeah, but Sachin already said most people, and he's in this industry, he says most people don't know who the hell they are. Right, but that's the point, that you're trying to get to a point where you're capturing that, that um, you're trying to get more exposure to people like that. Yeah, I'm just Having saying, 100... if you have social right. following, it's, I think it's undeniable so, uh, that you're going to have more. Sachin, go ahead. So let me, let, let me intervene here. So, guys, how, how long ago you started knowing me. I mean, if you see nobody knew me about before 2020, because I was literally dormant on social media and why I was dormant on social media, because if you are growing in a corporate ladder, you keep your social media clean. Okay. These are people like me who are going to buy things. Okay. So the, the statement, what Amit said and Chris said, this is both uh, true in part because a lot of people like me, when I was there, we don't take hints from what is happening on the social media, especially in the Twitter space or something like that. I mean, there are a few of us, of, of, nothing is 100% right or, or wrong on that part. Okay. But then there were things also that we started taking notice when there is something is repeating quite a lot as well. So at this particular point, their product is B2B. The industry need to know more about them. They need to reach people. Messaging is a problem for Palantir. Okay, and the reason for that is is uh, in their culture because they were driven so much to hide things and to stay secretive that when they share two sentences, they think, "Oh my God, I have done a lot of things today. I should not have said that much." Okay, so that the marketing is is not in their DNA, and that is what they are trying to build. In the sales is not in their DNA. Okay, and that is they should. Uh, so they definitely need sometimes you need a, an inspiration or blood from outside. I mean. I wouldn't say that that to be a social media influencer, but see, there is nothing wrong in going and having a chat. Okay. For example, like if you see Elon Musk and he goes and talk to Sandy Munro and he talk about battery and Munro has actually criticized him. And that is one of the best interviews that has happened. Okay. So Elon goes to discuss Joe Rogan. The challenge what is happening is that Palantir is having these chats and discussion either on news channels, which are not very entertaining to them. Okay, they yep. only task or they do it in a very elite setting where they go and they sit in a panel where uh, like that, in a that Aspen forum. interview that Carp did with Andrew Ross Sorkin, it got like 10,000 views, which is nothing like yeah. it's nothing at the end of the day. Right. So. So at the end of the day, uh, the messaging, at least in terms of reach part, has to improve in one way. And, you know, there is there is good to have an open discussion. I mean, like, for example, if you are going to have a discussion in a certain panel, uh, in a certain institute, there is already a lot of decorum. You share the questions beforehand. It's not sometimes a free-flowing discussion. People want to hear a ground truth at times. They want to ask questions openly. So at least they can try sending some of their people to different forums. Okay, don't talk about politics. Why don't you send your product design uh, engineer to a panel and discuss like an open panel in a YouTube is fine where they discuss about like why it is different and what are the different uh, practices we follow. What should different companies should follow when they are looking for a product marketing? You can lead a thought leadership also in this, this certain center. Like for example, one of the things which uh, AWS did pretty well. And I always, I, I think I find it's very inspiring at time is, and people can relate at this point, and Lord, we are doing a lot of Zoom meetings. In AWS or in Amazon, there is a there is a bar, there is a high barrier of entry before you call for a meeting. Okay, it's not like you need to write this narrative before, uh, and you send it this narrative, that means you need to spend time on it. So there are some best practices that come in, so which you can lead in terms of a thought leadership at times, you need to start behaving like a leader before you become leader. I mean, like Elon was saying what EV industry should do. Elon was not saying all the time what Tesla should do. Elon is saying, I'm doing this because this is how EV should do. I'm doing this because this is how the industry will evolve. I'm disrupting the business model because that will help foster adoption of this. So Palantir at this particular point has not taken that kind of leadership. They have taken a leadership in terms of 
how civil liberties framework should be deployed in a data environment but there are a lot of areas which are missing and actually no company has taken that kind of leadership at this point so there is an open space where they can actually move in so part of messaging and part of social media engaging has a role to play may not be in a in a way like we see with other companies but this is an avenue that has not been explored uh, a lot by them back to you guys I, I I think the thing that the CEO for Weijo did, I think that was great. Having YouTubers that are specifically focused on certain companies go out there and interview them that uh, that that have a large presence in like innovation and tech. Like I said, I don't think a 10 million view cat video is going to do anything for Palantir, right? Like Palantir could tomorrow come up on their channel and have you know, cats running around and then be like, oh, look at this Palantir channel that's putting cats on everything. No one would care. You can't total reach, like the total number of views means it's meaningless if here's, you don't reach the right what, people. It, it, it's not cat videos. Let, Carp did a 54 minute interview, right? If they had hired a really good short form editor for that video, they could get 50 bars, like 50 bars that Carp drops about Russia, China, Ukraine, blah, 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 30 second clips. And just disperse them all over the i mean we know youtube didn't you do that didn't you do that like isn't your channel full of things like that no, no no no. but there's a difference there's a difference my channel is trying to create a 10 minute dialogue analyzing what the ceo says which maybe is reaching three four thousand people that are the same people that have seen the same content for six months that are obviously interested in the company we know like objectively everyone knows the algorithm on every platform instagram has just changed the rule that if you upload a video it automatically becomes an instagram reel which is their tiktok competitor is uh promoting short form video why the hell is palantir not making literally a thousand short form videos of of carp who has said amazing things over the past 10 years of public interviews hold on every single week why is that not happening why is because that there's happening? there's content creators that are doing it right there's this no, guy no, 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 palantir no, no. bite size that's doing the same exact that, thing no 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 this is so Palantir's Twitter account is 114,000 followers. If they had a million followers, you cannot tell me that's different. If they had zero followers and they were tweeting into the void, like there would obviously be a difference. So there's a spectrum, zero to 100,000 to a million. Well, they need to grow that. And two tweets a week with this politically correct, we are proud to announce, but like, no one gives a shit. Like if they can't figure out social, and I'm not saying they have to because they're, 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 a, they're a B2B company, but if they did, it would be good objectively. It wouldn't Why? be bad. Is there all of that? I mean, yes, they could they could create content and things of that sort. I really want them focused on instead getting their pro their product to be consumable and deployable faster than needing a forward deployed engineer. Dom, and you could do both. You could do both. You could hire a couple. You of social can't when you're people. paying your people so much in stock based compensation. No, I no, don't this think is they have a massive editor. marketing budget. This is someone who needs to spend five hours editing like short form video. This is this you could pay this hundred thousand dollars. You happy. can you can do it with an intern actually. You see the, the key part. Intern. I think we all we 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 all can agree is that they need to improve on their messaging both to businesses and uh, overall. I think that's the that's the key part. And there is uh, how they do it and what works. I think we we all can think in our own ways, but we all agree that they need to do more on that. Yeah. They need to hire Amit. That's what they need to do. Because yeah, Amit's go. got this no, no, figured no. out. This, this video right here, I mean, this from Brian, the, these videos would be meaningless to close multi-million dollar deals. I like, I don't know, maybe it's because we're all, some people in the, the chat are older or something, but like she, P, Charlie D'Amelio, we know this girl, right? She has 140 million followers on TikTok. She is 16, 17 years old. She dances. Like if Palantir could access 1 million people, not 140 million people, I'm not saying it has to be on TikTok. It could be on any platform. That is valuable. It is valuable having a million people caring about your company. And if you don't have those people caring about your company on the distribution channels that exist, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, blah, 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 you are irrelevant. I'm not saying you don't. You are I don't know, man. Friend. I work for VMware. We're doing pretty good without any of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But VMware, I, the, we're, I think we're, someone we're, said VMware something VMware. in the chat. That's really good. He's like, do you want carp to dance? Do a carp dance. You know? no, no, no. You guys, you guys are so wrong on this. It's funny you're so wrong. There are people going viral on TikTok that are not dancing. TikTok is everything. Uh, so wrong on this. To, it's not even funny. You're so wrong on this. Let's bring it back. So just let's to, bring it back. Bring it back. Just to, to, just, to, just to put it in perspective. I mean, like, 
let's not compare it with like well see if you take the aws channel on youtube that has nearly 600 7000 subscribers okay so palantir should have at least uh, if they are going i mean 200 300 is a mark they should be looking after so they, that's a that's a kind of a question they should ask okay why and how to disburse uh, uh, more content to people at least who are subscribed to aws or who are subscribed to google cloud or microsoft azure so there is a community and that community is definitely not 140 million but it is larger than what they are accessing as of today so there is a definite scope to improve their messaging and uh, they they are not doing that uh, in a very very good way at this point Back yeah, and it's also it's also a question of the form, right? They have the content. Carp has done hundreds and hundreds of interviews. All they have to do is change the medium of distribution. They spend God knows how many thousands of dollars to make a video with Trafigora that they're working with, and it gets viewed by three thousand people that are all Palantir fanboys. Versus, if you play with the algorithm a little bit, I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. Hey, these are algorithms that you need to learn how to work with, and you distribute short form video. And more people know who the hell Alex Carp is, which means it's not that they're going to buy Palantir, but they're going to know about it. Brand recognition matters. And then if they're working for a company like VMware, what is Dom doing? He's trying to get VMware to use Palantir because he knows about it. If he never knew about it, that wouldn't happen. I mean, you're, you're you're kind of right on that, but I think I think in that regard, Palantir did do a good job. This whole Zelensky meeting was like a hit out of the ball. That was amazing. That was good. Like that literally, was, every good. single. Every single person in the Western world was like, "Who the hell is Alex Carp, and why is he in Ukraine?" Right? Yeah, that they did, was they, like a they did, not, they did not milk that nearly as much as they should have. They, it was one or two tweets on that same day. Not a single tweet, not a single article, not a single you know form of content series like Alex Carp doing an interview about like, like none of that. It was just a one time here and there, and that to me is a failure on social marketing at a high level. And again, yeah, I'm not I, saying social translates to revenue, but it translates to brand recognition, which inevitably leads to some form of growth. Yeah, but but in that regard, I don't think Palantir could have let on too much. Like, this is what we're doing in Ukraine. Like, hey, Russia, we're targeting your your tanks like this. Or, hey, Zelensky, you know, why don't you tell them know, all the great stuff we're doing? They don't have know. to say confidential stuff. There's a there's a there's a famous sort of saying in social, which is you learn what you're good at and you say it eighty seven thousand different ways, and that's how you keep people engaged. That's how what all content creators do. The same dance. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good saying. That's a pretty good saying. Good I like saying. It. But I, I honestly think that just Carp just doesn't give an F. Like he's focused on he knows what his mission is, what the company's gonna go to. So whether now now I'm not saying that I wouldn't rather have the stock go fast now and get paid while I'm alive, but I'm just saying that. He knows the technology is so in advance. Like he's focused on making. No, but Dom, you can't make that argument. You cannot make that argument because th we have criticized them for months, saying the tech could be a, a trillion times better than anything else. If you can't distribute it, it doesn't matter. So saying Carp so focused on tech does not hinder the fact that they can pay three interns a hundred thousand each, which is insane for to do this to distribute his his content. Like there is no I don't even think like his content that. though is most important. Like I want to see use cases. Like I want to see ROI. I want to see like tell me more about the BP deal. Tell me more about the deal that you did with Trifigura. Tell me more about how you're changing the water industry. Give me figures. Give me a demo of Code Strap doing a full. Yes. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Coding. All of that I agree with. But if they did everything you said and they got two thousand views on all four of those videos you mentioned. What does that do for distribution? Remember, we're talking distribution here. Yeah, distribution. But, um, what do you want them to do? You want to go up to Charlie D'Amelio and say, do a dance while no, 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 Carp no, no, talks no, no, about no, no, a product? No, no, no. Don't, I mean, don't I would just like him to show up at the conferences that everyone else yeah, shows up at. I agree. I agree with that. Right now, Palantir does a really piss poor job in showing up to industry events. Okay? That's one of the reasons why I, people don't know who they I are. Totally, I totally agree with that. I mean, this is one of the things which... Uh, so I'll give an example, like one of the companies, uh, uh, I mean, I, I was talking and these guys didn't know, I mean, I discussed with them about Palantir. So oh, this is a spy company. I said, no, I mean, uh, they do such and such things. After a discussion, I mean, I was able to set up a meeting at some point of time uh, to meet these guys with Palantir guys. I mean, later on, I learned that now these guys are doing a workshop together. So the thing is, I'm not a... I mean, I, I mean, I just try to connect friends. I mean, like what we do in the professional industry. So you have this problem and that's exactly what I did. See, the messaging is an issue. That messaging has to be 
uh, focus for your customers, for your industry, but the frequency of that messaging is is definitely a concern to me. That how fast it comes or how thick it comes. Sometimes the the language is is a bit. To, and you know the reason it is happening is because there are only very few people responsible for that messaging, and they have actually yep. full time role. You yep. need to increase. You need to increase. Like I mean, the 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 developer channel they started. That's very good. I mean, I really like that. And I mean, Chris covers it in quite detail, like the different use cases that comes from it. But for example, like they don't go. Like I would love to go to AWS reInvent and all these events. I mean, I was in corporate. I was going to these events. You build a lot of network. You you enjoy. I mean, some of the best times you go and you have it. So for example, like. I mean, uh, Slumberger is doing this uh, SIS. Uh, I mean, uh, like a digital forum, and this time they are doing in, in Lausanne, in Switzerland. They have done it in past in Monaco. They bring all of these energy people coming. All the big CEOs are coming. They are talking. It's a very easy environment to to actually build that kind of confidence and what they are doing. You meet these people for breakfast. You are staying in the same hotel. You spend the day with them. You see their event. They see your event. You go on drinks. You have so you know these are the things where where. Where the relationship actually grows in a in a B two B environment. When you go for AWS reInvent, I mean, I remember one of my friend. I mean, she was traveling to this event. She was like posting uh, all the videos from there. So that is what is something is missing. They are you need to build this kind of rapport and that community in the B two B part, in the sales part, in the developer part, and which you, which is not happening at this particular point. So yeah, it's a bit of investment. Okay. But this investment is better than publishing your ad on the WSJ. I mean, to me, WSJ print media is yeah. dead. And, and so, so hold on, hold on. Let me piggyback off one thing Sachin said. I agree they should go to more conferences, but here's here's sort of my philosophy here, and I really want to see what people in the chat think about this. If the New York Times or WSJ or Washington Post, all these reputable media sources, write a good article about Palantir, we would all agree. Let's say they wrote five good articles about Palantir a week. We would all be so happy that all this big media coverage is positively representing Palantir. Now, that's not going to happen. There's a lot of political reasons that's not going to happen. But also, I mean, what obligation does the media have to cover Palantir? They don't give a shit. They'll cover anything. So that means in this age, which is the most amazing age to be a human in history, you have the ability to access your own audience. We have democratized the media. What are we doing? We have 200 people watching us at 12 a.m. on a Friday night because um, because we've democratized and we've gained a, a bit of an audience. There is there should be no disagreement at all that a company. All right, even all right, all right. Place, you, hold on, let you, me make my you point. You outdebated me. I'm, I'm thinking. Let me make my point. I'm looking at their developer YouTube channel of only. And it's shit. It's, it's trash. Th that's my point. There should be zero disagreement that in this day and age, even if you're in B two B, you should be creating your message, your narrative, propagandizing your ideas. And if you got to do it in a short form video, because that's what the stupid algorithms want, then just do it. Like. If they had a couple million they, followers, that would be better. They definitely need to hire some better digital marketer people. There is no doubt about it. Andrew Tate. Get Andrew Tate. <laughs> Andrew Tate. That's what it is. No, I, I agree. I mean, I'll give you I'll give you credit on this because just uh in general. But dumb, but dumb. There's one thing that I, I I mean, I was critical of them last time I spoke about their developer channel, but I started to ask around the industry, like how some of my friends and stuff. And they said, Chris, who do you think uses this stuff? Like, you really think like an average person or even a CTO knows what the hell they're talking about when it comes to data science? Data science right now is so such a new field. There's barely 50,000 people that work in data science on it on like the industry level. Like hardcore see, data science when it comes to I, I see when it comes to ready to yeah. jump down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Wait, hold on, I, hold on, I, hold on, I, hold on, hold on. Before Sachin goes, let me set up Chris's argument. And, Chris's argument is that you don't need to do that much marketing because the market's not that big to get people's attention, right? No, 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 no. I'm saying that the people that are going, like, when it comes to their developer channel, they're the the bad job that they're doing is that they're going into the technicals of it right which is very limiting like there's like someone who's like a data engineer would be great to use something like the developer channel right what they need is to actually have use cases so that guess what a cto a ceo a cio they look at it and says hey maybe we should get palantir because of x y and z right now the people that are like right now they're they're showing people how to do things in palantir yet there's no way to, for you to actually try it. Imagine That's, the people that I, are going to be looking. I, yeah. 
I agree with Chris. I mean, uh, one why why to. show why show people if they cannot do it themselves? Let me show you how to use Windows, but so, I'm not going to uh, give you the application. Come on, that's the stupidest so, thing in the world. So uh, let right, me second, jump. Right. I mean, so see one thing. I think everyone, how many of you have actually seen digital transformation in your own organizations? And you know, people who have gone through digital transformation organizations, if you talk them openly, 80 to 90 percent actually have a very bad taste about it. They say, "Oh man, they did it," and I really feel. I mean, the, they have no clue about it. So this is one of the thing is the, that people who are doing digital transformations and people industries. I mean, a lot of people exactly are still not clear what they are trying to achieve with it. I mean, a lot of time people say that digital transformation means digitalization of processes, everything you are doing. No. A lot of time people see that today you are doing something on paper, tomorrow you are doing an app, you did digital transformation. Digital transformation in true sense is disrupting how the business is done. And that is what a lot of industries are not doing it. And that is why digital transformation actually leave a lot of bad taste. People say, oh, I tell you, like, I mean, I have been in companies where I see that they were claiming to be the leader in digital transformation. But the reality was in that particular time, few years back is, I mean, I was like, man, I'm doing handling like 30 systems. I'm spending... 50% of my time in reporting things I don't even care about. So that is one of the things. And you know why it is happening? There are five reasons it happened. The first thing is that everybody wanted to capture this idea that, okay, in, if you go back to 2013, 14, I mean, big tech was so hot, everybody was asking. I mean, today we know that Exxon is nowhere close to Google. But there was a time when this transition was happening and these CEOs were asking, oh, why can't my company win this kind of money? I need to build a digital language. Okay, but I need to build digital angle with my blue eye boy. Okay, this guy, I like him. He has to be my CDO. He has to be my CTO. The guy has no credentials on that. The second part is the IT used to be a support function. And then they said, oh, now you are going to be the core part of business. These people don't know what to do about it. They have never been part of business. They were always sitting in the basement. I mean, if you have seen the TV series IT crowd, that's what IT used to be in, in, in most of the companies. The third was, they say, oh, we need people to do it. From where we hire the people? We hire people from Microsoft. We hire people from AWS. We hire people from Google. Now, these people come and you give them a problem. For them, you give them a problem. Their understanding is, I need to write a code. That means I need to build things. So everybody embarked on this, do, do it yourself kind of solutions. That's how it started. The fourth was, oh, we need to, we need to build some sort of products. But now, like, who will build the product? So you need to come sort of consensus. Oh, this is my budget. This budget goes to this uh, department. This goes to this department. And a lot of these are falling. So they know if you raise fingers on one on each other, the fingers will be raised on you. So you start burying skeletons in the Almira. And that is why we talk about And Gartner says 87% of do-it-yourself AI solutions fails because everybody is hiding facts from each other. You... You don't, you say I'm good and I say you are good. It's like scratching each other's back. Okay, that is what we call in the digital transformation first phase. And this is where a lot of failures come. The fifth part is, since you have invested so much money in your reports, you need to show that we have achieved something. So this is where all the slides and so we spent this much money. This is all the success. People who are doing digital transformation and who are going through digital transformation in the organization, they know it's a lot of pain. And 80 to 90% of it doesn't result in anything. So all the success and all the revenue that we talk about in industry in terms of digital transformation is actually coming from a very small portion. And that is where they need to ensure that Palantir has to ensure that in their solutions and in their work, can they actually make larger success out of it? And this is what the, the, the moat, in my opinion, is for this company. Back to you guys. So Carp needs to, to get on Twitter. Basically, that's what's like. The one thing I'll give you, Chris, is that he can't say a lot of stuff because he's such a high-ranking confidential CEO. But to Sachin's point, I think if Carp, you know, gave a thread every week about data analytics, there is no problem with that, right? It's then it's just a question of if people are gonna retweet it, which a lot of us will, which will get him some more followers and build his brand. You what know, they need is someone... ask other people like like Matt Babin is is their energy EVP. I mean, a lot of people in the industry knows Matt Babin. I mean, if Matt is speaking about energy once in a while, he did one video. I mean, I was surprised that person of his caliber actually appeared only on that one video in, in the marketing channel. He's the guy who, who led and orchestrated the BP project. I mean, and the way he talks about it and the interactions I had with him, it's, 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 it's a pleasure to talk about. It. And he'll be appearing in different conferences and all that. So 
you need to start projecting your domain hats people who are leading different part of industry okay because someone in energy may not feel comfortable talking to alex but he will feel comfortable talking to 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 matt bevin because so who are these people who are your rock stars i mean if you remember like in, in there was an ibm had this ad campaign and mbi ibm is saying our rock stars are different and they will show this guy who has generated who created the usb he is walking through is a very normal looking guy but people are looking to him like like you look up star Okay, so who are your rock stars? Who are your so Sachin? Let me let me let me ask you a question real quick. D does a CEO need to be a rock star in 2022 to become a 500 billion trillion dollar company, or can a CEO be super? No. I would say Snowflake, Sno uh, Frank Slootman, he's a rock star. Like if when you see him talking, he's an absolute killer. Do you think it's required, or can you be under the radar and still be a big company? No, it's not required. Okay, and it can help and it can hurt also. Okay, I mean, like different companies. Uh, what you saw with the Robin Hood, I think it's the the CEO rock star was actually became a problem for them. So it's a uh, see at the end of the day, it's it's also like uh, in terms of how the company has to come. Company can have a lot of different leaders. If you emerge, so we know Shyam. We know, uh, I mean, look, like for example, I haven't seen Alok on any of the CNBC or any of the interview. He's the he is the head of their go to market lead. Okay, so there are you need to make leaders, more leaders, more faces, more people from company talking to different people out of it. Like for example, if you take the case of Elon, Elon is such a towering figure, yet he managed to project, uh, I mean, Karpathy as a AI business leader. Okay, so people were started looking, and people were looking what he has said, what he has said during his time in MIT, and things like that. So you need to project leaders. I mean, it's a, I mean, we are we're not discussing leadership here, but. This is one of the thing which is important. Is like, for example, you talk about Indian politics. Like, why a lot of party sucks because there is only one leader. They don't project promote other leaders. Why you talk about BJP because they promoted so many leaders at this time. And so leadership is very important in this part. That how you are grooming the next layer. Okay, people who are communicating. The message has to be consistent. They use the same wordings. They use the same messaging. Okay, and that is where yeah. I think they can do a lot more work. Here, here's a good comment by Jay Schwatt. How much of Palantir's commercial business, in your opinion, is from outbound leads versus inbound needs? Uh, that would be a great indicator for us to understand what's working for them. Before I let you guys take that, if you want to, like, here's one thing for me, right? I think a lot of it right now might be more outbound. They're trying to get access to decision makers and say, hey, we got to sell this product. CARP's entire philosophy on civil liberties in this day and age, where everyone is so concerned about data protection and privacy, I mean, that shareholder letter, if they figured out how to get CARP on these platforms, like a hundred times a week, talking about civil liberties and privacy protection. And he built his own following on that one idea, which is one philosophy of many philosophies that he's able to speak about. I mean, you just have so many random people, even if it's just LinkedIn, because that's the business platform that are scrolling through that would see this eccentric CEO that they've never heard of before, that they're probably more of a decision maker because LinkedIn has the decision makers on that platform. That's why businesses advertise heavily there. Uh, shout out to Sachin's dog that made an appearance on the on the podcast for the first time. And they see Carp talking about civil liberties and data protection. What if one of those business leaders is in Europe? Hold on, Chris, where they really give a shit about GDPR. You don't think they're going to click on the profile, say, hey, who's this guy, a company of Palantir? What's Palantir? Do you, go down the funnel. And in general, over time, maybe that leads to more inbound leads for Palantir versus outbound. I think that only happens if you go get the market, not if you're just waiting around doing one interview every five months. Amit, have you ever emailed investor relations and see if they want to join us on one of these? Just for, I don't even care if they send the janitor, dude. Let's just talk to someone from Palantir. You think they'd send somebody? Because... In one of their slide decks, they did say that they're doing more outreach on YouTube and they did get Alex and they did get Coach Strat, you know, and we've, we've got enough people watching our, our BS all the time. Maybe we can ask the Palantir folk directly and say, hey, guys, you I mean, know, maybe you guys can do explain. Look, maybe bit. look out of these 189 people, I can guarantee at least I would say 20 of them work at Palantir right now. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that are working at Palantir that are, they don't comment in the chat, but they're just looking, they're watching us talk. I think maybe they would send it, but maybe they don't want to be associated with us because we're free falling. We said a lot of crazy shit today about them. We said, we said they suck. Yeah, but, that, stuff, that's, right? but that's exactly why I want them to come and say, you don't know what you're talking about. I would rather hear them tell me to my face, you don't know what you're talking about than, uh, than just leaving some dude on YouTube spilling crap that, that does not make sense. 
you know. Okay. Remember, everything that we're saying is all theoretical. Maybe they do have some kind of grandmaster plan that we don't know about that, you know, that they can at least even shoot down our criticism. Dude, I, I welcome them shooting us down on our criticism, you know, because that just means that it just so, goes to support the product. So, so this is how I think this is where the sales view of a company matters. Okay, so for example, say somebody from Palantir can see that there are four dudes uh, sitting on a weekend or Friday night talking about Palantir. But who are these dudes? Okay, Chris, you are leading IT in your hospital administration. So you know what you're talking about. And you could be at least someone, at least you want to have a good will. I mean, Dom is running uh, sales uh, in some of the largest companies. Okay, I mean, I advise data strategy to some of the senior most guys in the companies. At least I know my industry well. I led the digital transformation in different companies. Amit is trying to launch a big tech startup. Why his startup cannot be built on Foundry? So what do you see? I mean, see, this is where your the goggles you wear is, is very important. Okay, now if you see like a lot of times uh, when, uh, when, and this is where I think Ilan actually shines a, a lot. He knows how to like engage and people to turn into, uh, to, because he knows like who, talking to whom and a lot of messaging he gave to people and a lot of discussions he have. He knows he cannot have that kind of discussion on CNBC. So why do, why do go there? CNBC will only talk about numbers. I'm not talk, going to talk about numbers. I'm going to talk about strategy. Now, CNBC doesn't talk about business strategy. It's a finance channel. It's not a business strategy channel. I think this is one of the, the big misconception people have. Yep. Okay, strategy is always forward looking. Okay. So that is... Number, that is number, where, it, number. Numbers get clicks. Strategy doesn't get clicks, yeah. right? Not, yeah. yeah. So what? Uh, so invest. Like we said, there's tons of things they can do. There is if people are not reaching you, and I mean, going back to your question on the inbound and outbound. I mean, they literally had six salespeople until 2019. I mean, how how, how do you think? Like they, they the the Alex Carp and Peter Thiel has said that CEO was on flight selling and talking. That means it's always the top-down sales. Top-down sales take a lot of time. There is no, no, no bottom-up sales, uh, and that's what they are trying to create up here. So that's what I always say. There is a lot of money on the table that Palantir can capture at this time, but they are not doing it. Okay, They are capturing more every quarter, but there is still a lot more. So the risk I, I, on Palantir is execution always. Yeah, and if you, I know you guys have scrolled through LinkedIn and you've seen the Palantir ads. Like, I'm pretty sure you have, right? Like, if you're scrolling through LinkedIn, maybe I'm one of the only ones. It's a, it's a little picture and it's some stupid copy of like, we can help propel your business. Some nonsense. I'm like, this ad, it's not even compelling. Imagine if that ad was replaced by a video of Carp that they put 50,000 behind for with for 30 seconds. He's explaining why they don't work with Russia and China or how they increase the BP's. Uh, efficiency in supply chains. I mean, how much more effective would that be? Why is that not happening? You've got a charismatic guy who is speaking on the record, nothing confidential about what the company is doing, their philosophy, and it's not being advertised. Like, in my opinion, I think, I think that could solve a lot of brand recognition and lead to more sales. We need Charlie D'Amelio. It can. Let's just get her. Yeah. Let's it just can get be, Charlie D'Amelio. It can be even. It can be even simpler. Also, like for example, I mean. Uh, I mean, BCG published this on their website, so I can speak about it. It's not confidential, but like you'll see, we discuss about consumer sentiments. That means company will go and they, they will interview a lot of people at a C-suit level and ask them, what is your priority? At a, you will go and discuss like with CDOs and they will say, okay, these are the top five things that CDOs are looking to spend most of their money in next three years. The question is that these are, so what messaging you are giving now these two CDOs? You see that of CDO is coming and they are saying we are going to triple our AI revenue in the next five years. So what is the message you have for these CDOs? So there is there is the, how you create your content. You know, when I see Palantir content, and this is my outside in impression, like somebody think I want to share this thing about Palantir in the company and then they go and say about it. A lot of time they are not thinking what my customer want to listen for me, what they want to know about myself. So it's a, it's a very one dimensional communication at time. It, it has improved, but it's nowhere near. I mean, like, I don't know how many of you have seen, there is a, there is a podcast on, uh, on um, Spotify and it is by Snowflake. 
it's amazing i mean if you re- listen that podcast you will learn so much about snowflake and what their customers are doing or what how do you how do you how do you find out about the podcast sachin where did how did you first find out about it i was searching uh, on data strategy data cloud podcast and this is how it came to me because i thought mm-hmm. there should be some okay i right. mean there was no recommendation to me which the problem you are trying to solve yeah. Well, well I, I mean, that's the case. I'm just, I, that's what I'm just thinking. It's like, look, I get we're in a world in which algorithms dictate media attention, but you've got the smartest people in the world building technology to help stop Ukraine from being destroyed by Russia. You guys can't figure out algorithms on social. <laughs> like, come on, man. You can't figure out algorithms on, you can't, like, this is insane, man. This is, they could, they could have 10 X their brand presence in the past year of going public by just being better on social. I don't know if that re- leads to more revenue, but I know that leads one day to more revenue. See, though, Charlie the way Camilio, you look at businesses, Andrew yeah, Tate, the- Jordan Peterson. No, such and go ahead. Them all. Thing, no, we need to get them all, bro. Go such and go ahead. So the, the way you look at business is following. I mean, like you say, like, for example, BlackRock has come and BlackRock says that next 1,000 unicorns are going to be in the climate space. Okay, when you listen to a statement like that, you take a step back and you say, okay, what does BlackRock is saying? What does it mean? If 1,000 unicorns are going to come, and you know, when we talk about unicorns now, we don't talk about companies a billion dollar, at least a $10 billion. So even if there is going to be not 1,000, there is going to be 100 companies that are going to above $10 billion and that don't exist as of today. What is my product for those companies? How do I identify those companies? How I'm going to serve share in those companies? So how you look, look so what happens in like Palantir way, and again, I mean, it's an outside in view is, they try to see problems like, okay, this is a problem that needs to be solved. Okay. And they will, and their idea is like, okay, these customers will be solving, but you can take an entirely different view. Like, okay, exactly what my customer is struggling at this point, what they need to solve as of today. Okay. And for example, like why Snowflake came up with the idea initially that we need to decouple the computation versus the storage, because they were seeing people who were dealing with site reliability, engineering, uh, management with AWS, it was a nightmare. They said, okay, this is not how companies are going to go scale up. Okay. So they came up with a very different idea. Okay. So I'm sure, I mean, Palantir will be doing it. Like I said, it's an outside in view, but that is how you look. Okay. That is how you are going to capture the market. And that is how you go and create messaging about it. Right. And even okay. even this comment right here, get carp on Lex Friedman. We all know Lex Friedman. I think he gets probably close to 10 million downloads an episode or something. Why do we want carp on Lex Friedman? Because we know a because, Lex Friedman, oh, Sachin, go ahead. You can answer it. Go ahead. go ahead. I mean, the most important part is first Lex Friedman is an AI expert. He can have a very meaningful discussion with them. He can understand yep. the technology. Yep. He's sitting in MID. So, and again, I mean, reach is one part, but the kind of discussion he can have with someone on the company is, uh, and you know, he is very bold when he asks questions. It's not like somebody you can just push around. So yeah, I totally agree with that. So, so, so how is a $20 billion same. company? How have they not accessed this guy? Like, like this is the thing that blows my mind. You're a 20, you can't access this podcaster and make a request. And, and, this is the and you know, Lex Friedman, Lex Friedman is a kind of a centralist guy. I mean, he is not extreme left. He is not right. I mean, he is open to logic. Uh, he is pretty much like guys like him. I mean, left don't like them. Right don't like them. I mean, these are exactly the kind of uh, philosophy that Palantir has. Um, so, yeah, they should be. And more important, he is an expert in his field. Okay. And he can have a very meaningful discussion about technology with them as and if required around the philosophy of the company as well. 